Hello, this is Roland. Today I want to talk about Christian mysticism. What I would like to say is that there, um, there are some very nice writings of the Christian mystic. Um, recently I read, I heard something that was sung, a quotation from Julian of Norwich. It was very beautiful. And she talked about how she saw she had a revelation and she saw that she had a, a little tiny tiny ball was placed in the palm of her hand perfectly round perfectly round and she was it was revealed to her that it represented everything it represented all of creation and she learned from that but she already knew, of course, that God created everything. He creates everything. But he also cares for everything. He cares and sustains everything. There's a beautiful, a beautiful realization on her part. Um, and when I heard that, that talk about the perfect sphere, the perfect little ball, perfect sphere, it makes me think of some of the videos that I've seen of experiments on the space station where if you release some water, it, it forms a perfect sphere, a perfect globe, a perfect sphere. It's the most beautiful thing. You see it in the space station, this perfect sphere of water floating around in microgravity. And from that you can learn that gravity is the lines of the pre-time, lines of force from which we get gravity, that become gravity and become time, are in all directions. Coming at that water from all directions, like, you know, like winding uh, around a, a ball of string, from all directions they come. And they, from all directions, form it into a perfect sphere. It's just a beautiful thing. Anyway, Julian of Nor Norwich is nice. I appreciate Brother Lawrence and Teresa of Avila. And I appreciate Father Thomas Dubé. He's passed away now. But Father Thomas Dubé was a, a spiritual director. And he was... Uh, something of an expert on Christian mysticism, on contemplation, on infused prayer, on discursive meditation, on transforming union. And he talked about St. John of the Cross and uh, Tresor of Avila quite a bit. And I appreciate what he has to say. You can find some of his videos um, the easiest way is to go to EWTN, that's the name of the old Catholic radio network, EWTN, and uh, enter Thomas Dubay, D-U-B-A-Y, or perhaps Teresa of Avila or St. John of the Cross, and you'll, uh, you'll find some of his old programs that are just wonderful. I also appreciate Madame Jean Guillaume, François Fénelon, Miguel Molinos, Thomas Akempis, Brother Lawrence, appreciate them all. I'm sure there are others. Those are the ones I appreciate. But what I want to say to you is that, is that you, I've, what I've always said, you can't study your way to God. You can't study these people. Studying these people is not going to help you. It could actually hinder. But if you begin on the path, and it's very simple. See, even um, uh, Madame Guillaume talks about the, and so does Brother Lawrence, I think, talks about the prayer of simplicity. Um, and she, Madame Guillaume calls her, her, um, her prayer a short method of prayer. And it's basically placing, she talks about placing yourself 
in the presence of God, becoming still. See, little do you realize that you spend most of your time lost in your imagination, thinking about the past, worrying about the future, planning, scheming, setting goals, daydreaming. So thought, these thoughts, these images, concepts, and images, they just carry you away. And you get lost in them. You float away. You forget who you are. So you can get lost in things. When you get lost in things, in your in thoughts, ideas, in the goal, or in the world, in your texting or music or work or something, you lose yourself in it. You forget who you are. Have you wondered sometimes how people can do bad things like that? A man can suddenly betray his wife, his family, go off with another woman. You know, that sort of thing. You wonder about that. Maybe when you were a young person, you, you had some friends in high school or college, and uh, a friend, let's say, who, and you saw that he, he was basically a decent guy, or she was a decent lady, but she did something totally out of character. Totally out of character. When we get lost in anything, if you go to a dance, to a concert, you get lost in the music, or lost in the crowd, or lost in the drug, or whatever it is, you, you forget who you are. And who are we? Who are we? Well, you're a child of God. And you were put into this world to, um, to appreciate, to observe and appreciate. God's handiwork. You know, we appreciate artwork. You go to a museum and say, well, that's nice. Or you hear a piece of music you say, that's nice. Look around you. Look, look at the, the marvel of creation. That's God's handiwork. So that's what we were put here for. And also to love Him. And for Him to love us. Okay? And ultimately, you were meant to find Him. To be restored to Him. The human race fell away. Well, beginning with Adam, you know, but it's it's a wonderful it's a wonderful story of reconciliation. Um, it's a beautiful story when you when you find we find God. Sometimes you hear about a parent and child that have been separated for years or decades, and the daughter searches for her father. She knows he's not dead. Somehow in her heart she knows, and she searches for him, and she finds him. And they wreck, they meet. It's the most beautiful thing. It just, it just, you know, you want to start crying. It's so beautiful. Well, it's something like that. So, but where are you going to find God? It's going to be in reality. And you have to get out of your thought, your thoughts, your mental constructs, and planning and scheming, and all of the distractions and the seductions of your thoughts and emotions, and uh, all around you. See. Um, you need to stand back a little bit. That's all. Just stand back. See how simple? You don't have to you don't have to try to stop thought. You don't have to try to blank the mind. You don't have to give everything up. Just stand back for, begin learn how to stand back a little bit so you're not lost in things. So you can recover who you are. See? Recover who you are. And uh then, see, that will put you in touch with your intuition. The greatest gift that you have is your intuition. You had it when you were a little tiny child, when you were born. You could just see, see things. You saw, maybe you saw your mom was angry at your dad, or you saw your dad was weak, or he, wasn't, he somehow wasn't there, or you saw an injustice. Your mom was being nicer to your brother than to you, or someone was being nicer to your sister than you. See, you saw the injustice. You just saw it. That's your intuition. It's a gift from God. Only humans have it, not animals. But that intuition, once you can refine it and abide with it and appreciate it and start paying attention to it instead of doubting it and disregarding it and stand back a little bit from your thoughts, then you begin your return journey to God, like a salmon going upstream. And then you go through a lot of adventures. Maybe you make a few mistakes along the way. You make a lot of discoveries about yourself, about people, 
You learn how to forgive. You see, the other people can't help themselves. They don't even know what they're doing. See, so you, you don't hate them anymore. You see that you've, you've made mistakes. You begin to see how things pull you into them and then you're distracted and make a mistake. You see how you become angry. See, you, you see little things. You see that you're washing the dishes. I'm just going to make something up. You're washing the dishes. And then you're, you get lost in thinking about what your husband said or what your wife said. It makes you ang a little bit angry. And then in your anger, you accidentally bump your hand or drop the dish or something, you see? And then you say, oh, you see how that a moment of being gone into those thoughts with a little touch of anger, see? And then that moment didn't work out right. So, so you see that. And seeing those little things, you gradually begin to refine yourself. So, I recommend you try my little meditation. It's free. I have a free version. It's very simple. Become still. To learn to sit quietly. Close your eyes. Look at the inside of your eyelids. See the little patterns of light. That way you're not lost in your thoughts. Become aware of your hand or your hands. So your hand tingles warm. You're in the present, okay? You're close to your intuition. And you become more like you were when you were a little child. Christ said, unless you become as a little child, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. See? So you have to refine that innocence. Refine that clear perception that you, you had. You still have it a little bit, but the trouble is now it, it's clouded with anger and judgments and thoughts and guilts and so on. So... You have to kind of thread your way through all of that. And with the light of intuition there, it helps you. Okay? Then you'll be able to appreciate Teresa of Avila. You'll be able to appreciate St. John of the Cross. Instead, in other words, you won't study them. You won't study. Get lost in it. You'll read a little bit. Oh, and you'll say, yes, I see that. And you'll appreciate what's being said, the message. You'll, you'll see the, the depth of it or the, or the truth of it. And so you won't get caught up in the personality of Teresa of Avila or St. John of the Cross or whoever. You'll, you'll just appreciate it. You'll say, well, the, she sees what I see. Or I see what she sees. She said it very, very well. Okay? Maybe she said it better than I could. Maybe someday I can say it and it'll be of help to somebody. But it doesn't matter. I just see it and it, appreciate it. But then you move on. See? So these, these writings of these people, or the little talks of Father Dubay, they're very nice, okay? But they, it's just like a little after-dinner mint, or a little, um, I was going to say brandy, I, I don't drink, but I think you have the idea, just a little, some, just a little something, and you see a, little, you see a, a beautiful phrase, and something, oh, you see it? Then you move on to something else. You'll be able to appreciate rather than studying and getting bogged down in, in the okay? Um So I, I would say if, begin to practice some meditation first. What I call meditation is becoming still in the present. Okay? And not lost in your thoughts so much. Or, and, but you still will get lost in your thoughts. But then you snap out. You'll see that you were lost in your thoughts. You'll still get lost in music. You'll find your toe tapping. Then you'll see that you're lost and you'll pull back. Okay? So it doesn't mean that you can't appreciate a little something something that you eat and taste good or or you hear something that you kind of you kind of like a little bit, okay? Or um, any anything like that. You can still appreciate the the niceties of life, okay? But just not too much. Don't make them too important. Don't get lost in them. See? So that's why you have to reconcile. Now you see why, how, how being in God's light, and then, then you will also see something that you have done or are doing that's sort of wrong, okay? like resenting your partner, or you, you see that you resented your mom, resented your dad, or you're impatient with your child, and you see it. And it causes you a little bit of pain. But it's a good pain because it means your conscience is there. It means, which is another word for intuition. It means God's light is there with you. 
gently showing you that. Very, very gently. Very. Then you see it, you're a little sad about what you see, you realize also in God's light you can't change yourself. You realize that also. It's another realization, an important one. You see that you can't make yourself better. So it's like letting go and letting God. Life becomes simpler. becomes more beautiful. See? You become more like a, a tourist on vacation looking at all the things, some of them puzzling, some of them interesting, mildly interesting, some of them fun, some of them you don't understand at all, some you don't are not so good, but you don't let them bother you. You just look at watch them as if you were on a vacation looking at all the sights. Isn't that interesting? See, it doesn't bother you. It's just interesting. Okay. So, hope you enjoyed this little talk about the um, the Christian mystics. <laughs>